Hello friends, welcome back to the online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Today we are in lecture number 8 that is structural transformation in architectural history. As we discussed earlier different uh, role of structure uh, on architecture, how it actually helped to bring the form and also uh, like bring the quality and concept of that. But, uh, so far whatever we have discussed, I have shown some of the you know modern buildings and all, but it has been practiced since long. Like uh, over the time if you see the history of architecture, then uh, we can understand that how the structural requirement and it needs uh, transformed over the time. So, in this lecture we will uh, basically see those through the ages and we will discuss uh, with respect to the world. Uh, history of architecture and I will also give you some of the information about what happened uh, that time like in different phases like starting from prehistoric to the uh, your uh, neoclassical modern architecture, what happened in India and how structural form uh, that has changed. So, uh, in the introduction basically the need for changing something is basically to refine to make it more better and better. Say for example, uh, if I take a cube, uh, a solid cube, um, okay, it, it is a, a nice object to see with a nice proportion because of all its sides are equal. But the moment we just create or add or subtract some portion from that, that will create some different form and we create some voidness inside it and make it habitable. So, like that whenever we need something to you know get something uh, from the basic to a new one or modified one which will help us for some of the or to solve some purpose. So, we go for it. So, as true for the structure and your architecture basically the first purpose if we see the primitive age where uh, the you know our uh, the ancient uh, man. So, they were threatened by the other ferocious animals and also with the external environments. So, for that they built shelter. So, earlier what they used to do they started living in the cave, but uh, let me tell you cave is not man made architecture, it is a natural one. Okay. So, this is basically the erosion of uh, your rock due to some water flow or the wind flow. And um, people used to you know live there and then later on they also invent some of the tree house and then slow and slow and now we can see the tall structure like Burj Khalifa or Burj Al Arab. So, this long journey uh, there are different phases where sometimes structure was so basic and prominence or importance was given to the structural arrangement. Sometimes in earlier presentation we have seen that along with that basic requirement uh, they also ornament it. So, we will go through it. So, human needs and desire changed over time. First it was the purpose, the basic one of the basic needs is shelter and then when we have it, then we want to make it more aesthetically pleasant environment. Even in the cave they painted, so you know this particular idea like decorating the structure, making the space more beautiful was there in the history also. But it changed over time, earlier uh, there was no that much space constraint or maybe for the empires or who were having uh, enough wealth to build mega you know huge gigantic monumental structures. But now it is not really possible because of the land availability or maybe sometimes with uh, some other constraint. So, then uh, like we uh, invented a different technology, different materials by which we just transform the structural requirement for the modern building. And over the time the special uh, uh, need also changed. Like earlier it was something like when we consider the cave that has different space requirement and then the modification has been done over the years. So, we segregate the space in different manner. We uh, uh, even we take the example of a residential building where uh, we have segregated the whole uh, uh, space, design space in different you know uh, areas like we have bedrooms, we uh, have toilets, then kitchen and then dining. So, like that uh, 
uh, the requirement of the kitchen and everything based on the anthropometry. Anthropometry is basically uh, the dimension that we require to you know do our activity with that. So, those anthropometry uh, played a crucial role to design those space. So, spatial arrangement and requirement also changed over time. So, we have seen in history that how those monumental structure now become a, like human scale structures. So, these are the changes uh, we have seen. Then architectural style also changed and it has influence from one empire to other empire based on that it has been followed over that area even it crosses the boundary uh, to spread in uh, you know in a global spectrum and so as true with the structural requirement because the moment we go for a uh, you know huge structure where like maybe uh, um, that is not having that much interior space. So, like uh, with minimalistic interior space we developed uh, like the huge structures. So, that was something else, but that time we should also remember the steel was not there, concrete was not invented. So, that is why it is all the stone. So, um, uh, they made uh, megalithic structure. So, we will come to that also. And now we have invented steel glass so that we can reduce the thickness of the wall and we can do some excellence what was not there in the mind and gradually we are improving on that. And scale of the architecture already I mentioned that uh, from uh, monumental structures now bring down the human structure sometimes also we follow uh, back the our you know history and we make a structure very huge and spacious. And most importantly the new and innovative materials and technologies that change the everything the scenario. The time to time we got some good material having good strength and which can be you know easily uh, placed in, in you know instead of using the traditional brick or other uh, type of building materials will will re uh, really you know giving more strength as well as it will also create the desirable uh, interior space that we normally looking for to maximize it. So, let us uh, move to the history and uh, definitely with uh, the time constraint and other uh, you know uh, things. So, we, uh, it is not possible to give uh, all the examples that uh, we can put it, but uh, definitely here I try to you know summarize it or take some you know very prominent examples. So, I would also request you that you also do this search and also compile some of the more buildings in each of the phases which depicts that you know the architectural style as well as the structure used in it. So, let us move on. So, this is the overall uh, you know timeline and um, there are some you know uh, maybe in some of the sources they add some other thing the Crete architecture or something like that. So, uh, these are the basic timeline uh, again it is of the world level. So, starting from the prehistoric then we have the Egyptian architecture and we know the pyramid and other type of you know uh, beautiful piece of architecture at that time. Then the classical period is very important where we uh, have this Greek and then after that it is uh, Roman architecture. So, starting from Parthenon to Pantheon. So, style uh, more or less same, but you know the formation and the requirement has changed a bit then Byzantine, then Romanesque and then Gothic. Gothic uh, architecture is very famous for the ornamentation of structures, uh, the use of some pointed arch. So, we will also get uh, the detail of that. Then the, in the Renaissance period uh, again it is evolved, then Baroque and Rocco this is basically coming to uh, some you know uh, again the decoration and beautification of that. And then uh, uh, you know in uh, the 18th, uh, 17th, 16th century, 17th century that time neoclassicism, then art of you, then your neo-gothic those are the you know new type of form that has come, but followed some of the earlier you know concept and the order architectural uh, order and the rhythm. And then uh, when we uh, take uh, the art deco and the Bauhaus movement during this you know um, 1920 and that particular phase. So, system has changed the modernism is getting to start at that time. 
So, in modern style the you know we go for the minimalistic structure. Uh, so, tho those are actually uh, possible with some invention of you know steel and other things. So, after the industrial revolution, so the structural uh, requirement and their uh, you know used in building uh, that has changed the scenario. Then the postmodernism we have seen some beautiful buildings at that time uh, even uh, including your uh, you know uh, Sydney Opera House and those kind of uh, structure. And then the neo modernism and uh, parametric architecture this is uh, nowadays in practice and you can see that uh, uh, all these things like from modern to the new uh, postmodern and the uh, parametric architecture these all are practice even uh, some of the buildings we again look back to the you know earlier classical order in the architecture. But uh, these are the architectural forms. So, our focus will not really discuss the contemporary architecture and their transition. Uh, we will also try to focus on um, the structural changes, how it has changed. So, in the uh, prehistoric period that uh, we uh, can get some beehive kind of structure which is basically a dry stone compressive structure. So, put stone after another, so that will make uh, this structure. So, it is similar to the uh, construction of igloo, so where no mortar being used. So, uh, just uh, the self uh, weight being transferred through this particular arrangement. And here sometimes we also used mud or sometimes uh, most of the um, cases stone, stone was used. So, that was something like uh, having small opening to just uh, act as a door. So, this uh, is something really uh, interesting at that time and this is basically a compressive domical structure. So, where we just stack stone after uh, one after another to form it. This is uh, another example of dolmen. So, this is basically the megalithic structure. So, megalithic structure is basically where uh, you know horizontal um, you know slab is resting on the up right upstanding slab. So, uh, if you uh, take a particular slab like stone slab and then you make it you know upright in this position and you put another one again no motor uh, being used. So, you can see that how it is resting there. So, it is giving uh, some form of stability and uh, because of the self weight and the position. So, it is again making uh, like this structure stable. So, it is uh, the horizontal stone slab resting on two or more upright slab. So, this is a megalithic structure and it create a quadrangular shape. Uh, so, basically this is the interior space. So, it is uh, it was helpful that time to protect uh, ourselves from the external uh, ex externalities or protect from the other animals. This is another uh, um, example of the same where multiple such megalithic structure is form this temple kind of uh, structure. So, here you can see that uh, the interior space subject to like with respect to the you know solid structure is very less as because there was no specific idea like how much is optimal you know area to be given for the structure and how to do it. And remember there also it is again uh, putting stone one after another to create this space. So, uh, that was the idea and from here itself uh, the idea came that is basically uh, like giving a stability to structure where horizontal member will be resting on the vertical uh, member and then we later on name, uh, name it post lintel or post beam structure that we will see in the next phase. So, this is again prehistoric example and uh, this is the stone hinge uh, following the same uh, you know uh, same uh, kind of arrangement of structure uh, post lintel or post slab. So, uh, depending on the span or the area of the stone we used either we call it slab when it has a considerable uh, you know 
area length and width and when it is just uh, you know uh, just like uh, a piece of like beam. So, then we go for this post linton structure. So, this is again one example from the prehistoric period and now we move on to the Egypt. Egypt again uh, they create the you know beautiful architecture with the symmetry and the stability. So, pyramid is considered to be one of the most stable structure because of its uh, you know larger base and then when it go up it merge to a point. So, again for uh, the wind uh, condition and uh, other lateral forces this kind of shape is very useful. So, that is why uh, now also in the building modern building high rise building as we go up we give a you know conical or pyramidical shape at the top in order to reduce uh, or the resist again the lateral wind load. But again it is a monumental scale so structure is being very used and stone as material. So, the using stone as a material is basically giving good strength and all together it will uh, like one after another it will also give a, a megalithic structure. So, that it was stable not only pyramid even that period in Egypt uh, they have also constructed other structure uh, where they have used the timber beam and then uh, this is monolithic stone masonry. So, you can get uh, this particular wall ok. So, uh, a piece of you know stone there uh, they have used then uh, the columns made by single rock. So, that is another important issue. So, th that is basically from the single rock they cut and they give some kind of you know uh, ornamentation to it they paint those structures. So, in uh, Egypt this is famous that uh, they always about the Egyptian you know painting on the wall and the columns. And overall the concept is again uh, remains same in this era also this is post lintel or post slab where your horizontal uh, slab is resting on um, the vertical columns. Now, come to the classical period uh, there we start with the Greek architecture and this is the example Parthenon which uh, almost in you know many of the cases we repeat this particular example uh, because of its multiple you know characteristics. Here again it is uh, as already we discussed about this uh, you know Parthenon that it is basically a structural uh, you know dictation is there to create this form. So, basically in a rectangular form multiple columns are placed and then they are connected with a lintel or beam and basically what it gives it is the tributed system where uh, you know uh, you have uh, this horizontal beam on this column and then you can create uh, this kind of you know uh, triangular uh, members to support it to create the roof system. And uh, the most important thing here it is not simple uh, like post beam structure or very you know uh, rough finish. So, de enough decoration has been made and the Doric architectural style, style been used in this structure. So, you can see the capital of these columns and already we discussed this in uh, the last lecture that uh, how this ornamentation has been done in this particular period. Even in the uh, uh, lintel or beam also uh, ornamentation has been done. So, basic idea is your post uh, like lintel structure, but with some ornamentation and this has been uh, carried forward to the Roman architecture and there like structural system again your post slab or post lintel, but here in this case column arranged in circular or rectangular. In Greek most of the cases this is the rectangular form, but here in this uh, uh, we also discussed this example in the last class that it is uh, like hemispherical dome placed on a cylindrical form. So, giving more stability to that and also create uh, those you know uh, we accept this structure in architecture and here in the uh, entrance portion. So, they have used the column, but here the Corinthian style is used where the capital is giving a uh, you know ornamentation uh, aligned with the uh, you know organic thing like leaves and other 
uh, you know living elements. And again uh, this structure is pretty similar to the uh, Parthenon at this front portion and the back portion is a huge dome. Uh, so, this is basically again following under uh, the category where it is being used with uh, your uh, stone as a material. Now, uh, this is uh, another example from the Roman architecture, the Colosseum. So, here this uh, beautiful arena is been made uh, and give a elliptical structure and here stone and mortar being used even uh, that is used in uh, this case also. Now, come to the Byzantine where uh, like stone is being replaced with some brick instead of stone and then dome roof. Uh, like in even in Pantheon in Rome we have seen that. So, it is being used and here along with that uh, you can see that uh, you know arch uh, use of arches in for the window uh, being used even for the structure this huge stuck uh, you know the roof. So, again the peach roof has come into the uh, picture and construction material basically limestone and sand mortar and construction system is wall slab. So, instead of column, so it is basically the load bearing structure that is being constructed. So, wall is being formed, so that give envelope and on top of it either it is pitch roof or the dome roof. So, there is a transformation that we can see earlier it was post lintel uh, kind of structure where you get more void uh, through the structural arrangement itself, but here it is something where we go for wall and slab. Now, the Romanesque uh, is again the addition to the Byzantine dome that is uh, your uh, gothic like steeple. So, this you know structure being added to it uh, and definitely if you see again the scale uh, has uh, a little change in that even like the scale has little reduced here and along with that uh, they also create some additional support to this. So, uh, basically again here the stone and the brick being used and again it is uh, like your load bearing structure that uh, was constructed during this phase. Now, co come to gothic, gothic era is uh, specially known for its uh, ornamentation of structures. So, basically here uh, you see the basic structural is again your post lintel and post slab uh, also and then uh, you can see that pointed arches then flying buttresses and ribbed vaulting these are uh, features of this. So, what is the flying buttress here? So, you can see here that uh, it is giving another support ok lateral uh, support to the main structure and uh, when it is talking about the vault ribbed vault is basically you know sometimes it may be uh, like it is again a compressive structure which will transfer the load uh, through the structure on the you know on its support. And then uh, sometimes it may be uh, like the ripped one where uh, like we create a frame uh, of the vault and then we cover it up. So, from interior you can see all these buildings and this is the Notre Dame in uh, France where we can see this peach roof along with this buttress and then inside it also you get some cylindrical form and the vault use of vault. So, gradually like in order to support the stall structure and also create the interior space more interior space to make this space uh, like column free to have the assembly in a beautiful way. So, development of uh, this kind of compressive structure ok where ribbed vault and other lateral force uh, lateral resistance being provided by flying buttress these are uh, you know some of the addition to that. So, shifting from simple point lintel to adding all this uh, is one of the feature in this period. Come to the Renaissance period here the um, symmetry played a role and almost you can see those style like here also ionic column being used and it is similar to the Roman and all, but again it is uh, your post lintel and your post slab structure along with that the central dome uh, arches being used. So, again the you know for the arch 
when we discuss uh, during the property of the arch, then also like uh, with this symmetrical arrangement it will easily transfer the load to the support. So, we can create some you know span with this kind of structure. So, as true with the dome and uh, again um, uh, like uh, if you take the example of uh, India, from India then uh, Golconda Ford in Bijapur they also have uh, uh, like it also has a huge dome. So, that is being practiced to create this structure. Now, uh, come to the uh, Baroque architecture here basically the structural arrangement has been followed uh, through your uh, gothic and all, but more ornamentation and very complex shapes the curvatures and other to be made uh, at the for the decoration purpose and again vault arches and buttress as your uh, gothic architecture. Uh, they have used to support the building, but more importantly it is creating some contrast uh, um, with the you know traditional architecture. So, ornamentation of structure creating some false column uh, that uh, was used here. So, that is in this period. Then Rococo is again further decorative design and uh, you can see those mouldings. So, there are also the dedicated geometric patterns being followed, some involute and symmetry uh, that has been made there. And basically, in this case, uh, again the structure is being followed like the same uh, with your um, the previous one, where you get uh, this particular Baroque architecture or Renaissance architecture. In the neoclassicism, where uh, like little bit modification has been done again uh, the symmetry is followed uh, and there again post lintel post slab kind of uh, structure being used then the use of column okay use of column and the blank wall is in practice even this kind of arrangement of column we can see in uh, like our uh, parliament house in india also you can see those uh, structures so it is basically a combination of the form and uh, again your structure uh, now being modified little bit and then dome and arches being used in this phase. Now, art novel basically this is the age where different art form being added to the architecture. So, again instead of state wall then curvature being maintained then decoration for the arches, balconies etcetera uh, being made. And then uh, it is basically the asymmetric shape and in order to support that uh, then there are different uh, other uh, you know different arches being used and uh, overall ornamentation uh, is being made. Now, Biox Arts is again a modification. So, this is example from Opera House in Paris. There you can see the beautification. The basic structure remain the same. Again, in this case, it is uh, like your column, then a portion is basically being supported with this lintel, and you can see those uh, you know Corinthian order in the column capital. Again, use of rib dome. So, that has been supported. Uh, but again it is again the beautification and ornamentation uh, that we uh, see and again symmetry is maintained in this case. Now, come to neo gothic it is basically uh, a transition to the modern uh, skyscraper, but adding some features of the gothic. So, gothic again it is a revival period where uh, those kind of ornamentation is made, but now in this case uh, like what we have this frame structure with post and beam. So, frame structure come into point and when we go for the uh, multiple floor high rise structure being made, but again uh, due to that lateral pressure and all it is again have this particular step cut architecture where you know when you go off the cross section of the building it reduce to you know resist again the wind load. So, this is uh, some advancement being made where uh, the scale been reduced to the human scale. Okay, the space is op optimized, but again ornamentation is still on in this particular period. 
Now, Art Deco movement again is a frame structure still being introduced already. So, again Jigurat uh, or uh, you know terrace pyramid, uh, pyramid shape uh, structure being made in this case and steel concrete used as a material to give the form and again it is uh, basically the high rise structure that was the need to create some high, uh, high rise office building or the residential building, hotel buildings and this is one example of that where uh, definitely overall it is giving a, a nice aesthetic look, but basically the structural point of view it has moved from a typical like your structure to the frame structure at this moment. Now, come to the modern uh, style. Uh, so, here also it is uh, the time where uh, like architects and designers they prefer the minimalistic form with the structural uh, you know um, application. So, this is one example for United Nations Secretary buildings, the multiple building, very simple straightforward building, a uh, frame structure use of steel and concrete. Uh, is very predominant and very simplistic, no such decoration and so as true for the glass house. Uh, again it is uh, like the use of steel and then you have use of glass. So, basically in the model style decoration ornamentation uh, that was not given prominence rather than that the space creation and the use of uh, the structure to create the or to reduce the thickness of the wall to carry the load. Uh, being uh, given importance. So, that is why uh, since then we create some multi story building with this. And postmodernism, it is out of the frame structure, then also uh, like uh, the designer they try the cell structure to reduce uh, uh, like uh, to reduce uh, the number of columns required and uh, it is creating with some you know uh, reinforced concrete, so that it can create the interior space. Uh, large span structure and we have seen in many uh, you know indoor stadium even in the example of your lotus temple that is being used. And uh, in that case also like in Sydney opera house it being you know made on that category. Now, come to the parametrism this is the uh, current age architecture where not uh, perfect geometry or something. So, it is being played with some parametrism and here you can see that uh, the nice wave and curvature being made and it is only possible because of the cell structures and different other structural advancement and uh, innovations of different material which can actually uh, bring this into reality with minimal thickness with uh, you know the application and maintain the stability. So, large span structure being uh, made and there are many examples. So, this is one of them. So, there are examples of different high rise building, many buildings been designed by Jaha Adit. So, this is the overall transition from a simple you know post uh, beam or post dental structure to this kind of form. This is a long journey and due to invention of steel at uh, after the industrial revolution, this has been uh, you know so popular even we have seen um, your Eiffel Tower that time. So, that has a change. So, um, you can just compare these two images. This is one example from the Singapore and this is the old you know Dolemon uh, kind of thing. So, basic idea remains same, but the transformation if you see the thickness and you can compare the thickness a huge difference. So, idea concept uh, being uh, in practice. So, from the history we learned so many things that we use it, but with some modification in the structural arrangement. And uh, so, basically we have discussed all. So, during this uh, phase also in Indian context we have seen Indus Valley uh, civilization where also there are examples of some of that structure uh, like the bath, uh, the great bath and all. Later on we move to the Buddhist architecture, we get the domical structure in Sachi and then also the rock cut architecture uh, to create those stupa and then also we have seen the Dravidian uh, temple in uh, that era where you know the again the form of you know mountain or some pyramidical form of the temple being made uh, that time and then slowly we move to uh, the other you know phase where we have seen the Islamic architecture like um, again Taj Mahal and other thing where it is a beautiful example of 
um, the structure, uh, uh, the symmetry and also the ornamentation. So, those kind of structure being made even in Fatehpur Sikri we have seen different you know use of those uh, brackets and their ornamentation and then later on um, like in uh, the phase of the British era or uh, you know your uh, colonial era there we have seen the use of different you know column and also mean uh, like they have created some buildings following this you know old uh, order like Dori, Corinthian and all. And later on like after post independence also we uh, go for the you know uh, global movement. So, during that you know Art Deco and Boha, so there are different buildings being made and we followed up. So, uh, the history of Indian architecture is also very rich the transformation we have seen from the structural point of view and the overall scale, but uh, here we have uh, just focused on the overall scenery of the world. So, uh, and we discuss some of the changes that like from basic structure then ornamentation then again in the modern era uh, you know stick to the very minimalistic form uh, go for more space creation and then in the modern we create again something very dynamic structure and which is possible again because of like day by day we are getting more material that can replace the existing one. We are able to reduce the thickness of the wall, we can go higher and higher and we are uh, breaking the record of creating tall structures. So, that is only possible with this transition and again some of the buildings they followed the traditional classical architecture uh, as a decoration also not as a structural point of view. So, overall architecture and structure they balanced each other and uh, with uh, the invention we keep on doing those you know new practice and we move from one phase to another phase. So, I hope that uh, this will uh, really help you to just uh, get a look that the transformation, but again uh, I am saying that I have taken very few examples of that and there are many. So, I suggest you that you also go through uh, those links I have provided uh, in each slide, so that you can get more information about those buildings and you can search similar kind of building, so that it will help us to understand about this transformation. So, with that uh, I con conclude this particular lecture and these are the same reading uh, materials, uh, some reference uh, says are given as uh, the book. So, you can go through that and the next uh, like we will discuss about different factors that affect the structural form. So, with that I thank you all for uh, you know participating in this lecture thank you